I am off to my very long-awaited doctor's appointment at San Diego Sexual Medicine. Hopefully today I will get some concrete answers and find out if I qualify for the vestibulectomy surgery. So let's go. Doing lots of testing. I know I'm supposed to meet with a sex therapist for like an hour. They're gonna do a Q-tip test and like some numbing test, but I'll give you guys more details when I get out. So I'll see you in four hours. to figure out where the heck to put this. I wish I could put it up here, but it's just not working. Is the steering wheel annoying? Ah. Anyway, first thing, I went in to my appointment and it was very quick to get in, no wait or anything. I went right in and met with Dr. Goldstein. I really like him. He seems very knowledgeable. He seems like he wants to educate people on their disorder and just their anatomy in general. I went in and re-explained a little bit about what pain I have been experiencing and he gave me another of his books so now I have two. Honestly if anyone wants this book, it's book, books, if anyone walks, oh I can't, I talk. If anyone wants this book, it is called When Sex Hurts and it goes over a lot of information. If you have painful sex and you're clicking on this video, just comment down below and I would be more than happy to send you this book because I don't need to. So he went through the book a little bit. There's this chart in there and it goes through pretty much all of the different things that could be happening to cause this intercourse pain. So he told me that he thinks that I have neuroproliferative vestibulodynia. I think I said that right. He thinks that it is from an allergy to a yeast infection cream. And also it was kind of surprising to me, but I did some blood work right before I came and I've done blood work before. So I did blood work in like November probably and everything was normal. My testosterone was normal. And then I did the blood work just barely and it's interesting because from like November until springtime, I was using testosterone cream and estradiol. My testosterone was on like the lower end of normal, but he didn't like that. He wanted me to like be way up on those numbers. And so, I don't know, it was just interesting. And I think that it's probably not going to do anything to get my hormones up, but you know, it's protocol that they try it. I was a little bit disappointed because he brought up that my testosterone was still low and my hormones were still off which can cause this pain and I specifically came to get information about the surgery and see if I qualified so when he said that I was like okay that's interesting but also from my perspective my husband and I don't want to go through a whole nother year of trying these other topical creams and whatnot. I've tried it before, it didn't do anything, but I understand it's your protocol. I understand that bumping that number up can be helpful. When they put me on testosterone cream, it was a lower dose than he's going to put me on. But I said, in our perspective, we feel like we're kind of wasting money by doing all of these other treatments. Whereas in the end, we could just eventually end up getting the surgery still. And the surgery is the only permanent fix. I might have to be on these creams for the rest of my life and I still have a lot of life. And so he was like, okay, that's fair, which I was very grateful. You know, usually I feel like when you kind of talk back, I guess, to a doctor, and you're like, well, from my experience, from my research, from what I've seen from my body, I feel this way. They're like, you don't know anything. You're not a doctor. You do exactly what I say. And he was like, okay, that's fair. Let's come to a compromise. So what we came up with was he is giving me a testosterone cream to rub on 
my actual vestibule and it's like a percentage that's a lot higher than the last one I had. Also, there's a cream that you put just anywhere on your body. So I'm probably just gonna put it on like my upper leg because you don't want like your pit to lick it because that wouldn't be good. But you just rub it on your skin and it absorbs through your skin, which is interesting. So since Nolan and I still would need to save for the surgery anyway, and I probably wouldn't get it till like October or November, in the meantime, I might as well try these other regimens because yeah, if we don't have to pay 10 grand for a surgery, that'd be cool. But I'm not totally sold that it's going to improve just by getting my hormones up. That's just my feelings and he totally validated those. He was like, okay, like let's come up with a compromise, which I really appreciated. So I'm gonna try those creams and in four to six weeks, I'm gonna get labs done again. I'll probably do it at the six week, just so it gives it a little more time to get into my system and then we'll see where my numbers are. And at that time, if I haven't had any improvement with the pain and the redness and whatnot, then I think we'll probably get on the books for surgery. I told Nolan, maybe it'll be my birthday present to myself because my birthday is the beginning of November and I think by then we will have the money saved and then I'll be able to get some leave for work so that I can recover and that's six to 12 weeks and then we can start recouping our savings. And obviously if you heard me talk about how we wanna to move to New York, we were gonna move in August or September, but now we're obviously pushing that off because it's just more important that my health is good and it gives Nolan more time to prepare for a job out there with his programming. So he's probably gonna do like a boot camp or something. So we're thinking that we might just move in the springtime once like I'm all recovered, once Nolan does his boot camp, so that we just feel like we have lots of savings, we're both healthy, he feels ready for his job. So it's kind of sad because I'm really looking forward to moving and just to have our independence because I still live pretty close to my family, which I like living close to them, but I also am ready to just like start our own lives. And it doesn't totally feel like that when you live so close to your family. There's a girl. I'm at a restaurant. I'm gonna get some salsa when they reopen in 10 minutes. Anyway, that is what we talked about. Then, I feel weird, I'm gonna turn that. Okay. Then I went into the exam room and there was a different nurse practitioner that did the actual exam. And it was really cool because they had a camera that they put and then like a big TV. So I could see everything that they were doing, which kind of freaked me out a little bit because I could like brace for the pain more. And I don't know if that was good or bad, but they did a Q-tip test. So they just take a normal Q-tip and they touch like from 12 o'clock all the way around your vestibule and like in those creases to see what the pain level is. And so they did that and most everywhere was, it was a five and up. So my 12 o'clock was like a five, which is moderate pain. And then especially on the sides, those were nines and eights, um, all those sections that they touched and then what they do is they take this cream that is a numbing cream and they just put like a big cotton swab and hold it on there and I held it for like five minutes and then they came back in the room and they test again and that brought my pain down to like a one or a two in all of the areas they said that I numbed up really really fast and some people take like 20 minutes but mine was super fast and then they're like okay if there was any other pain in my like vaginal area they would know that i wouldn't qualify for the surgery because if they remove the vestibule then you'd still have pain another couple of things to note one i just remembered it was it was kind of funny and i hope this doesn't offend anyone but dr goldstein he was explaining to me that your vestibule is actually not a necessary tissue. It doesn't have a function really. It can help with lubrication, but you don't really need it. And he was like, well, you would need it if uh, you wanted to turn into a transgender man, beca man because we would take the penis tissue that we would like put on you and we would attach that to the vestibule. He's like, do you want to be a transgender man? And I was like, no, thank you. But 
I just thought that was kind of funny. So from what he explained to me, you don't need your vestibule. You will still have sensations down there because all they do is take that vestibule area out and then they attach the opening of your vagina to your, what's it called? I don't know what it's called, but whatever, I think it's like part of your labia. Yeah, they connect that together. So you'll still have like normal sensations. I wonder as I'm like, sitting here thinking about it I wonder if there's any other issues like with stretching and stuff when it comes to like giving birth that'd be an interesting question honestly though I'm probably gonna have to have a c-section because uh my muscles I'm very bad at bearing down I've been told and that's why I'm like constipated all the time so probably gonna have to have a c-section because I don't think I can push a baby out of me but that's a different topic after the testing then oh and that, the other thing the other thing while they were doing the testing they also okay i might be a dumb person for not knowing this but like my mom never explained this to me growing up and i don't fault her because maybe it's just common sense but i was never taught when i was little like how to wash your private area and like that you're actually even supposed to wash it like my mom just said like wash your body so i was like oh like wash my body and it's like it's easy to like wash your armpits because it's just like it's just your armpit but like your private area has like lots of folds and stuff so i had a few yeast infections when i was little because i didn't know you were supposed to like wash so of course things would like grow down there and it was really gross and i had lots of pain and i think that's you know partly why i still have pain down there because of those like creams that they used and the doctor thinks I had like an allergy to it. Anyway, once I learned you were supposed to wash, I did, don't worry. I still, I just learned today, I was today years old as some say, I just learned that you're supposed to like peel back the skin of your clitoral hood and let water run through there. I didn't know that. Like, did anyone teach you that? Because maybe I'm just dumb and, but I didn't know that and it's like, they were explaining it's the same as if you uh, are a man and you're not circumcised. You're supposed to, you know, take that skin back and clean under there because it can get infected and whatnot. So because I have never cleaned my clitoris correctly, I have these little like tissue buildup, like they call they were calling it pearls. And now my clitoral hood, you can't even like retract it like you can't even peel it back because it like the the pearls and stuff like made the tissue I don't not able to do that I just thought that was interesting and he said like if we end up doing surgery he can remove those pearls in there and he can detach that skin because since I have that it is making my clitoris like irritated uh, more easily and I've definitely noticed that and Nolan has too he's like yeah like usually when like touching a girl they don't complain of irritation of their clitoris or they're like not as sensitive as I am so I thought that was interesting and if you don't wash your clitoris make sure to do that because you don't want to develop those little like sand grainy pearls whatever the correct term is I don't know anyway after the exam I went back to Dr. Goldstein and he had me call Nolan on our FaceTime Nolan and he showed me and him all the pictures all the redness he explained the treatment plan to Nolan he had us watch videos of other ladies that he has treated and their success stories and whatnot and he kept talking about how he was going to give me a list of names I don't know if like he built up like a community of women which is kind of cool and I would like to talk to some of them just to get I guess information on how they did with healing and how long it took and how sex is now because obviously the doctor doesn't know that from a personal perspective because he's a dude so yeah I would really like to talk to some of them and I with their permission like to share it with you guys so yeah uh the last thing I did was talked to a sex therapist and I think they do that because maybe these women haven't had support you know um, they feel really lonely and I think that's really helpful for a lot of people. 
I personally feel like I have had support and we have been meeting with a sex therapist for the past few months and I feel like really on top of it I don't feel like having this pain has affected my mental health that much and I just feel so bad for these women that it has and it's affected their marriage and I can see how easily it would affect relationships and I'm just so grateful to Nolan that he's so patient with me and that we've been able to find other ways you know to make sure that we are meeting each other's needs and sexually and just in our relationship and I'm just grateful that like our relationship is built on more than just sex and that we're best best friends and that we know that there will be an end to this and I've only struggled with this for a year where there's some women that have struggled with for 10 20 years and they're just barely finding a solution so yeah, it was overall a really positive experience. I just wanted to share with you guys exactly how it was and our future plans. And if you guys have any questions about Dr. Goldstein or about anything, just let me know. You can comment down below or you can message me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at pagehiggy. So I just hope this video reaches enough people that are struggling. I know that it's a lot. I know that millions of women struggle and do it in silence, but I'm just hopeful that this will bring awareness to these vaginal disorders because they need to be talked about and there needs to be more research done about it. So anyway, if you watched this, thank you so much. And I'll definitely keep you updated, especially if I get the surgery, but also on how the creams are affecting me. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.